Over the past few days, I've been working on a project in OBS that will allow you to switch scenes based on audio levels of a microphone. This is a boon for podcasters who want to add a video element to their podcast, but they don't have a production team to switch those scenes for them, or they're too busy to switch the scenes themselves. Basically, what this will do is if you have a camera on one person who's using a mic, that mic will trigger that camera based on the audio level of the person who's speaking into that mic's voice. And if you have another camera tied to another mic, it'll do the same thing. So basically, uh, this is far from a perfect solution, but it's actually a pretty good solution as long as you have the right setup and the proper equipment. And we'll get into that in this video. So before we get started, I want to give credit where credit is due. These instructions are based on a project from Esteva Segura, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. There will be a link to Esteva's GitHub page and this specific project in the video description below. But to get started, I'm going to assume that you already have OBS Studio installed on a Windows PC, and that you are at least a little familiar with OBS. In addition, you will need to install WebSocket for OBS. This will allow you to control OBS over a web browser as long as OBS is running. I'll put a link to download WebSocket in the video description below, but once that's downloaded, just make sure to close out of OBS if it's open and run the WebSocket installer. After that's finished, from then on out, anytime you launch OBS, you'll be able to control it with various software over your network. This is a handy thing to have if you want to control OBS via a tablet or a smartphone, for example. And once you have WebSockets installed, you will need to go to your WebSockets configuration panel via the Tools menu in OBS and set your password specifically to Secret for the Scene Switcher to work. But for this project, we'll be using a web browser to take control. And the kind of control that your browser is going to need is dependent on Node.js. And that's simple enough to install. Just head over to nodejs.org en slash download. Download the 64-bit MSI installer for Windows, and once it's finished downloading, run that installer. The first command in Esteva Segura's instructions is to run a git clone command. So if you don't have git installed, head over to git-scm.com slash downloads, then download and install the installation software for Windows. And now you'll be ready to make the magic happen. So open a command prompt and clone Esteva Segura's repo with this command. Now change the working directory with this command. We can skip the next step because we already installed node.js and the WebSocket server in OBS. Run the command npm install. Then, at this point, launch OBS Studio. You can minimize OBS, but it needs to be running for its WebSocket server to be recognized by the JavaScript node. Now we have two more simple commands to run from our command prompt. CD space src, and then node space index. And we'll have to allow access through our firewall to allow all of this to work properly. But once all of that's done, you can open a web browser and go to localhost with a port of 3000 to open the configuration and control of the microphones and the scenes that you want to tie them to. But we're not quite done yet. You have to grant permission to this page to access your microphone. I've already done that with my setup, but in Chrome, for example, you'll do that by clicking on this Site Information icon. You may need to refresh the page after you allow access to your mic but you will now be ready to tie a relative microphone and its sensitivity level to a scene of your choosing. So, for example, here I want to use my OBSBOT camera and my Ezer webcam for scenes. I have these scenes named OBSBOT and Ezer, respectively, in OBS Studio. Under my master scene, where it says Escena, I'm typing in OBSBOT exactly as it appears in my scene list as I have it named in OBS. And under Slave 1, I've typed in Ezer. Now I can hit this audio input dropdown and select the microphone that I want to trigger each scene. I want my left Samson Q2U to trigger my OBSBOT scene. And I want my right Samson Q2U to trigger the Ezer scene. I've set the sensitivity of both microphones to minus 15 decibels. I think the default of minus 25 is just too sensitive for this small room of mine, and I don't have any audio soundproofing in here. Your sensitivity level may be something that you will need to tinker around with to get it right, 
but once you have your sensitivity level set, you can hit start, and now your microphones will be controlling each scene based on sound levels that they are picking up. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so I have included a lot of test video ahead, and understandably, not everybody is going to want to watch. So I have included timestamps to the different test portions of the video, so you can skip ahead and skip around as you see fit. Okay, so as I've got it set up now, I've got this Samson Q2U microphone, and it's tied to this microphone, or this camera right here, and as long as I'm speaking into this microphone, it should stay on this camera. I've got another Samson Q2U behind me over here, and if I speak into that microphone, it should switch over to this camera that I've got over on my desk here. Um, this is not a perfect solution, but it does work with probably about 95% accuracy if you're using good dynamic microphones. So I'm going to go speak into that other microphone now and see what happens. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three, four. So yeah, um, right now I do not have these microphones placed in an optimal kind of setting. There's no soundproofing in this room, and I forgot to put a pop filter on these microphones, so I apologize for the plosives that you're hearing out of me right now. But anyway, um, I found that using a dynamic microphone with this setup is going to be your best bet. I have a, another microphone that is a really cheap uh, USB condenser microphone run into a third scene on this, and when I introduce that microphone, things start getting wonky because it starts picking up background noises and things like that. Now, it's not to say that things can't be triggered with a dynamic microphone, but those chances are way less if you're using a dynamic microphone because dynamic microphones, as you notice, the closer I get to this, the better the uh, sound level is on this and the richer the... Uh, voice becomes but like a condenser microphone is made to where it's going to pick up more background noises than what a, dy a dynamic microphone like this is um, so for the most part if you just stick with decent quality dynamic microphones this should work out pretty well for you again I've got this other dynamic microphone it's pointed at me my back is to it but um, the way you would normally have this set up is you would have your dynamic microphones pointed away from each other. And um, so that's going to even cause uh, like less problems for you if in this kind of setup. But again, I'm going to go over and talk into that microphone. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. And yeah, we see that as I talk into this microphone, it switches to that camera. Now, this other microphone is facing me now but it's about three feet away so it's staying on this microphone and doing a pretty good job of staying on that and I can see the audio level jumping on that other microphone over there so this is definitely yeah and it switched back there this is definitely not an ideal setup but if you take the, the time to really place your microphones and do this right this should be actually a really good solution. I have a third mic, which is a uh, cheap USB mic uh, set up for this, and it's tied to just my, um, my monitor here. So when I turn the volume up on that, watch how wonky this starts going. So, yeah, um, I'm not even... There, there's no noise anywhere near that microphone now, so it just is probably like cable interference or something of that nature that's basically causing it to switch to that scene. So, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that you're using good microphones, and like I said, I would recommend dynamic microphones because dynamic microphones are good at isolating everything except for what is directly in front of them. 
All right, so I've got my three mics set up right now, and the way that I have these placed, this is not ideal. I have my first mic set up tied to this webcam right here. I've got my second mic. Well, this mic is blocking it. Let me see if I can move that. Okay. So I've got my second mic set up right over here. And as you can see, well, I hope you can see, that microphone is pointed at this microphone. That's not an ideal setup. What we would really want to do is point these microphones away from each other, but for the purposes of this test, I'm kind of limited on my space, and this is not the most ideal setup. So I've got this mic tied to that camera, I've got that mic over there tied to this camera, and I've got a third mic over here tied to another camera. So we're going to test all three of these out now. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three, four. That one's looking good. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three, four. This one's looking good too. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three, four. Come back to my main camera and uh, my main mic, I mean, and everything is looking the way it should. Now, there are some downsides to this, and if you... If you give really hard sounding S's at times, it can trigger the other cameras and it can th throw things into a really wonky setup. And I think that if you were to place your microphones in a little bit better setup and maybe soundproof your room a little bit better, you wouldn't run into that so much. But check this out. Shh, shh. Hold on, it's not doing it now. Shh, 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 shh. Okay. So <laughs> I was trying to trigger that mic over there with the hard S sound, but it actually ended up triggering this one over here. All right, so to show the demonstration of this setup in a real world style scenario, I've got two cameras set up. I've got this camera on me and I've got another camera over here set up on my son who's going to help me uh, test this out. And I'm gonna conduct like a mock interview with him right now. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my son, Clark. Uh, hi, I, uh, I'm named after Superman because my dad's a huge nerd. <laughs> I hope you got that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what have you been up to these days? Um, just finished my second session of Dungeons and Dragons with my new party online. Um, Currently, I have several different plot lines going on at the same time, I suppose to say. Um, and they're falling really hard for a trap one, which is taking them away from the quote-unquote main plot. Cool. So, um, the technical aspect, you said that it's online. How's that set up? How's that work? Um, we use Discord for a majority of what we do. It's We're in a voice call uh, ch chatting, of course, um, but we have a lot of text uh, text channels. With, uh, for example, we have one dedicated completely to uh, the player's art. They make little doodles or anything like that. They post in the art channel. Um, I have a resources channel with different links that both the players and I can use to go look into, for example, monsters or. Uh, uh, Sorry, my mind skipped a beat there. Um, I have one tied to a pretty good city generator online, mm -hmm. which gives really plain, simple, nicely made maps, um, which you can highly specify what you exactly you'd like. Um, <laughs> and besides that, to keep track of all the like rolling of dice and action and combat and all of that, we primarily use Roll20, so then I can have a map and everything displayed out in front of my players and actively change things. I can move uh, pieces, I suppose, around, even though, you know, one of them lives in Belgium, and we, here we are playing D&D with them. <laughs> nice, that's the uh, convenience of the modern age. So um, you said you use Roll20 for dice rolling? Yes. Um, well, Roll20 does more than just dice rolling. 
um, I had them import their character sheets to roll 20. So if I need to double check something on their character sheet and I don't want to say interrupt what they're saying, I can just glance over. Um, it does have a rolling feature. Uh, it has a tile grid which you can manip manipulate into different sized squares. Um, you can change it from squares to hexagons and a few others. Um, and it's really easy to like uh, drag and drop a image file you have saved to your computer right onto Roll20, and it'll just appear. Maybe need a little resizing, but you know. Cool. That sounds awesome. So, are there different like? Um, can you do different dice settings for different games, or is it all just Dungeons and Dragons? Um, it has the pre-standard dice built in, um, and that's you know your one d four up to your one d twenty. But you can you can give it a special command, which is uh, slash r, this is slash roll, um, and then number, d, and then whatever number of dice, uh, whatever size dice you want to roll. The most common one is, uh, for Dungeons Dragons, of course, is going to be roll, or slash r, 1d20. Um, but I've used it to, to show them how everything works. I've used it to roll seven d1000s interesting um, i know it has several other uh tabletops built into it um i think okay it has a giant list of tabletops that you can host um and it, it even has a feature where you can create a campaign and then you can go and uh like, I don't want to use the word advertised, but you can put your campaign needs players. And anybody who is looking to join a campaign can go into the looking for players section, find a whole bunch of games. Cool. So um, is there anything you would like to plug while you're here being recorded? you want to plug your Discord or anything like that? Um, <laughs> at d and uh, Discord server is a little bit private. Um, pr primarily just so I don't get confused with all these extra people. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, more people need to play the game Rust. Rust? Yes. It's sort of post-apocalyptic. It's strange, in a way. Um, it, it, it's survival, crafting, all that stuff, of course. Because that seems to be the whole modern game genre, apparently, besides shooters, of course. Okay, so is this a video game or is it tabletop? It, it's a video game. Okay. Um, and I'm all about all different kinds of games. But um, I've been getting really into it because the community f as a whole is sort of toxic. However, it's when you're surrounded by a bunch of people who actively hate you for no reason, then you find somebody who's just willing to be really nice to you, it's sort of weird, but also very nice. Yeah. Hm. Um, and there's a whole lot of drama about uh, recently about it, how, you know, the quote-unquote original community, who is all toxic, who've been playing this for years, and who their first experience is spawning in on a beach naked, and then immediately being shot by somebody for no reason. And that's the entire experience for a while. But I think people in the community got really mad recently about how people are playing on a server, like a bunch of YouTubers and stuff, on a server, and they aren't being mean to each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, people are so mad about just, you know, people being nice to each other. Yeah. Like, what's with that? So how long has this game existed? You said that there was a... Uh... It, you know, the original players are, like, angry that people are nice to each other. How long has it been in? I want to say around 2016 originally. Okay. Though that's a rough guess because I don't quite remember. Um, yeah, it's gotten a lot of changes over the years. Originally, it was going to be... Um, it was essentially originally based off of another game, which was getting a lot of popularity early on. It was uh, Daisy. That's a zombie survival game uh, focused heavily on realism 
It's based off of another game, but <laughs> yeah. Um, Rust was made to fo- focus more on the survival and the PvP. Originally, it did have zombies, and they changed that, and then they changed a whole bunch of other stuff. But generally, the community likes how the game changes. They just don't like each other. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think that that is a pretty good technical demonstration of how this works. Is unless there was anything else you wanted to talk about, uh, we can keep this going if you'd like. But maybe we turn this into an actual podcast. Yeah, we, that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clark. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming and helping me record this. I really appreciate it. And um, that's it for this uh, recording. And um, We'll get back to the normal video now. All right, so we're doing another recording now, and what I've done is I've taken the um, sensitivity of this microphone to negative 5 decibels instead of the negative 15. So now it should be far less sensitive to those hard S's. But again, this room is not soundproofed, and I don't have any kind of like um, sound deadening panels or anything like that in here. And it seems to be that it is this mic that is far more sensitive to the hard S's than the mic that he is using over there. So um, maybe a solution to, to that would be to use those kinds of microphones. But I'm going to give a couple of hard S's now. 777, she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, his mic isn't picking it up, and it's set at negative 15 decibels. But we're going to do this again and just, you know, do a little chit-chat back and forth. So go ahead and um, I'm going to put you on the pressure here. Say something. <laughs> Saying something. Um, yeah. God, always putting me on the pressure. It's when somebody's put into the pressure that they can't do it. Or it's when you tell somebody that they can't do something, that that is the only thing they can do. You see, uh, when somebody says, don't think about monkeys, you're thinking about monkeys now. When somebody says, don't breathe, all you can do is think about breathing. You tell somebody, you are now manually blinking. Guess what they're doing now? They're thinking about blinking. It's all that getting in somebody's mind, telling them one thing or another, telling them they can't, they can. Once you tell somebody, that's when they think about it. That's when things become difficult. All right, so now give me a series of hard S's. A series of hard S's? You want me to just say sharp, seven, uh, another S word. Yeah, so definitely we're seeing a, it, there is a um, definite, uh, there's a definite disadvantage to using this microphone when somebody else is using a hard S in the setup. And this is a Samson Q2U. That's a Fifine K690 that he's using over there. And it doesn't seem to be triggered by uh, anything at all. So I'm going to try to trigger it now. S- 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 yeah, it's, it's definitely this microphone. So, um, with this setup, your mileage may vary, and um, uh, there's no guarantees with automation. It just kind of is what it is, but I think for the most part, it's probably about 95% accurate, if not higher. So I've tested this a lot with a lot of different setups over the past few days, and as far as I can tell, this is the best microphone that I personally own for this setup. This is the Fifine K690, and basically um, it's not triggered by those harsh asses. These Samson Q2Us are pretty good mics, and for the most part, they uh, worked out really well. But occasionally, when you did get that harsh S sound, it would switch to one of these mics when I didn't want it to happen that way. So um, I'm not going to say that this is the best mic you can buy, and I'm not going to say that this is the best mic for your setup, but this is the best mic that I personally own in this room for this setup. Uh, as far as making this all work the way it's supposed to work. Also, this is not the most user-friendly process. To start this, every single time, you have to launch OBS first to make sure that the, the WebSocket portion of the uh, process is running, and then you have to run two commands in uh, your command prompt to start the uh, page manager for this. 
then you can open your uh, web browser and configure the camera to the microphones and you have to do that every single time. I've saved a couple of steps by uh, writing a batch file to handle those two input commands that you have to put into the command prompt but as far as configuring the camera to the mic you do have to do that every single time. It's not too bad because the page does cache the scenes that you've put in before so you can breeze through that pretty quickly but I do wish that this process was a little bit quicker. And your microphone performance is going to vary from mic to mic and equipment to equipment. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of people asking, hey, I have this kind of microphone or I want to buy this kind of microphone. Is it going to work? And I don't know. I know that this mic that I have, the Fifine K690, it works just fine. fine. But every other mic that I've had um, has run into some problems. This is the second best mic that I own for this particular setup, but as we saw in those tests, sss, triggers it, and that's not exactly ideal in that kind of situation. Also, I think that if you're doing like a comedy podcast where multiple people are laughing a lot, that laughter could trigger this, and this may not be the best setup for that kind of person. But I think that in an interview scenario, I think in an interview scenario where one person talks, the other person listens, you'll get away with these just fine. But it's just one of those things that you're going to have to set up, you're going to have to configure it, you're going to have to play with it, you're going to have to mess around with it to get everything working properly under your setup. And I've got no soundproofing in this room, but soundproofing is definitely not going to hurt you, especially if you're a podcaster. So with all of that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up with a shout out to my channel supporters. If you would like to help support this channel, either on Patreon or Ko-Fi, there are going to be links in the description below. Remember, the best way you can support this channel is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.